This is called unobtainium. Well, not really unobtainium, but very hard to come by. This is an AGW 15 amp fuse. AG is short for automotive glass. And W, I think, refers to the size. This particular one is a quarter inch across by seven eighths inch. Usually you'll find an inch to maybe an inch and a quarter. This is the fuse that blew in the Buick. See, this light was out in the back panel here. That's called a opera light or a sail panel light or something like that. And my dad gave me a bunch of bulbs. One happened to be the right size, and I said, oh, well, let me just change it. Well, I didn't realize that when I pulled the old bulb out, that had two uh, little solder blobs on the bottom instead of one and using the round base of it, uh, round collar of it as the other terminal. So this had two, and when I put the single blob bulb in, things stopped working. And that was the sail panel lights. There's one on each side. The trunk light stopped working, and also the license plate light stopped working. Here's the trunk light up in here, obviously, on the inside of the trunk. It's not on now because I'm holding the burnt out fuse, the blown fuse. And this is the license plate light. Originally, it threw me for a loop. I thought this was like the trunk light, but when you close it, that sits right above the license plate, and they happen to mount it in the trunk. I did actually see a replacement cover for this available, I think, on eBay that was all nice and clear in that, but, you know, why? So, it was all because of my negligence that I'm left with a burned out or blown fuse. I went over to my dad, and he has a whole collection of glass fuses. He had plenty of 15 amp ones, but none in this size. So I was dead in the water. So what did I do? Well, I wanted to ensure that this was blown, so I pulled it. And these are not easy to pull without the right tool. I ended up just using a little pocket screwdriver, prying on the edge of it, and I was able to get it out. Um, I was able to hook up one of the blade-style fuses that they used in later cars. I think I relayed that story already when I said I was over at my dad and he asked, don't you have fuses? Well, I did. I had a whole bag of fuses, all different kinds. Some of these were out of a Honda, others were out of my old Chevy. I think I pulled all the fuses, and God knows where else. I think uh, Tom or Donuts had a couple of uh, parts cars, and I pulled uh, fuses out of that because it, it didn't run anyway. It was just for other parts. So I had a whole bag of fuses. So I hooked up my alligator clip wires to one of these, and hooked it up to the fuse panel in the car. Lo and behold, everything worked again. That was a wonderful, wonderful thing. The fuse panel, I'll see if I can get you a shot of that. This is the fuse panel here. I don't know how much light there is, but uh, it uses these glass fuses. There's a yellow wire at the bottom that is not connected. I have no idea what it goes to. But the one that is empty, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it says SIG for cigar or cigarette lighter. The car has two of them. There's one there and one back here. Before the fuse was blown, if I remember correctly the course of events, I swore I stuck a, uh, what do you call it, a test light in there and that didn't work. I hooked up the blade fuse, and of course I forgot to check that. So when I get my new fuses, and I do have them on order, I think I'm gonna hook the blade fuses up because I have a whole bunch of those, because especially because these are a real pain in the ass to put in. Um, the blade fuse I'll hook up and test that to see if it works. If it doesn't, it's just gotta be a wiring issue probably not a bad socket and God only knows about that one if that'll even ever work but the lights will work again so they run the sail panel lights the license plate light and the trunk light 
off of the cigarette lighter fuse and obviously the lighter sockets as well. Curiously, the light above the radio there works even though that fuse is out. So that is apparently on a different circuit switched by the same door pin switch right there. I was able to find fuses. I looked on eBay and on Amazon and some old guy on Amazon was selling out his personal stock and uh, the fuses were a pack of five for only 69 cents but five dollars shipping. That was actually the cheapest price I got out of everything so that'll just have to be. So I'll get that in, we'll hook it up. When I did test it with the blade fuse that bulb was still out. I don't remember if I put the burned out one back. It looks kind of frosted over as if it is burned out so that's probably what I did. I also learned that the glove box has a light that's out and the ashtray here is also supposed to have a light I was not able to locate that one, but I did locate the socket for the glove box. So in time, I'll get those bulbs. There's also supposed to be one in the shifter. And I don't know if you can see, I think that's it hanging right there. And I don't really want to take this whole panel apart to see if I can make that work. So that's just going to have to be for now until one day maybe I get adventurous. I also have to replace the bulb here for the left turn signal, as I explained that was out. Also the, uh, the problem where it sort of just stays on has gone away magically. I don't know how or why or what, but it went away. The illumination for the dash when you have the headlights on doesn't work, but that's because these switches have a rheostat and they get very dirty and uh, after 50 years that doesn't work. It barely worked on my old Chevy and that car was 22 years old or something when I got rid of it. So yeah, that's that. And there was one other strange electrical gremlin. There's actually two. One is the headlights where when I put the parking lights on, the headlights turn on and roll down. I also found that what I read is that it's supposed to only put the headlights back up when the key is on, but it'll put them down anytime you put the lights on. This for some reason will only roll them back up when the engine is started. And I think it has to do with the extra voltage that the alternator is putting out. I don't know why that is or why it's doing that, but that's not correct from what I've read. The reason they did that, they changed that, I think I read in 65, and the reason they did that is people would shut their lights off, and if the limit switches for the headlights uh, to stop were not adjusted correctly, then it would drive these back up, and it would actually stall the motor that runs them, and people would come out to the car the next day with a dead battery. So they changed it so it would only work going up, you know, rolling them back up like this when the key was on. I think I read in 65. I could be mistaken, that might have been 66. I don't remember if the 65 had roll-up headlights or not. So that leaves the last problem with the horn. Well, being that I still have the steering wheel puller, which I'm going to bring back because I have that on loan, I took the wheel off and aligned it as best I could so it'll track straight. It's almost perfect. That was the third attempt after getting it wrong twice. So I'm going to leave it for now. I still have, oh, two months before I have to bring that back, so I'm not worried about it. And we did hook up the horn button correctly. I, I, I haven't diagnosed it yet, but I have a hunch that the problem is the horn relay. Now, the horn, there are two. There's one here and one down in there, if you can see it. But you see all these zip ties and green wire, and this runs out and is hastily tied onto that. And there's this tab that's here. 
and this mess I don't know if Sal added these or they were on here or what the deal is with these um, it's a mess and it needs to be redone back over here you see there's two holes right there on the fender well and those holes are where the original factory horn relay is supposed to go obviously that's gone there is a relay here tied onto the overflow with this green wire and there was another one somewhere I don't remember there's some splices there that don't look healthy and I really don't like that so that's another project but there is a relay hiding right over here and I believe that is the horn relay oh there's the other one there tied in with that bundle of wire on the hoses um, I believe this is the one the horn kind of almost wants to sort of almost work and what I mean is this let's see if it'll actually want to work now nope but I don't know if you can hear I'll wait till the cars go by and I don't know what I'm showing you but you should be able to hear that click I think it's a bad horn relay or whatever that relay is acting as the horn relay I got a bunch of those so one day I'll tackle that and take it apart I think this wire I tested with a test light it's ground and used to connect to that that hanging thing which obviously doesn't need because it gets ground from the hood so I guess he just put that on because obviously he doesn't know how to wire brake lights and turn signals and shit so this is obviously the same kind of idea as well as all the other splices if you heard the horn almost wanted to fire it just it made a kunk kunk I think my hunch is the contacts are pitted or burned on that relay I don't know for sure, that's just a guess, but that's going to be an upcoming thing. I'll see if I can hit it again and make it work. It clicks, but... Every now and again you get a gook. It worked once. And I'm pressing all three pads on the steering wheel. So anyway, it's there. And the good news is that we didn't screw anything up with the steering column. So that's all back and put together. Maybe one day I'll pull the horn pad off and see if I can clean some of that rust and crap out of there. But we'll see. So like I've been saying, slowly but slowly, it's been a little over a year and things are coming together we have working turn signals we have brakes that work the blower works the heat works um, the lights are gonna work again <laughs> I've done the spark plugs the fuel filter the voltage regulator the radiator cap oil change would filter um, the windshield was resealed. So a lot has been done. And every day it's working more and more like a real car. <laughs> You'd never know how much of a pain it is without working turn signals when you need to make a left and nobody knows that you need to make a left and there's oncoming traffic the other way. So that's always been fun. But anyways, that's it. Sorry for the long-windedness of this, but uh, there's just a lot I wanted to cover about a minor subject. So when I get these fuses, I'll probably make another video 
showing all of that working. And hopefully I can find the ashtray light and get a bulb for it, as well as the glove box light, and get that and just do everything in one fell swoop. And then I could show you all the happiness of the lights going everywhere. One last thing, the sail panel light or opera light, if anybody knows where to get covers for it, for a 67 Riviera, or if you happen to have any, let me know. Rock Auto is the only place I found that would sell that, but then I gotta pay shipping and all kinds of stuff and it'll be a fortune just like the fuses. You know, the relative price of the item versus the shipping makes it kind of not worth it. The only thing that I'm afraid of with Rock Auto is that they don't have the actual dimension of it. They say that's for it, but as we found out for the turn signal, <laughs> even though it's right, doesn't mean it is. So I have one that was original. I took it off just so they'd match for now. So hopefully one day I'll look into that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Make sure you hit like. Make sure you hit subscribe. And take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.